So this is it. This is what I bought. Wow, look at that. Oh, and this video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. More on them later. That is so messed up. According to the seller, this PS5 was dropped and probably ran over. And by the looks of it, I think they're probably right. Let's take it out of the box and see if it's as bad as it looks in the pictures. Good thing they put bubble wrap on it. Wouldn't want to have any, you know, shipping damage or anything. Not that I'd be able to tell. And here is our destroyed PS5. So this is the front. The uh, This panel that goes over here is not even here, I don't think. I've been trying to decide if I think it was actually run over. And I think it just might have been run over. So one of the first things I need to figure out though is whether the motherboard is good. If the motherboard on this is good, then we do actually have a chance to fix it. So got to get the covers off and let's start taking apart and see what this motherboard looks like. Wow, we got some good road rash here, that's for sure. And along here, wow, this was definitely abused. Look how smashed that is. So this is definitely damaged a lot, but I still have hope for this motherboard. You can even see the heat sink down here has all been smashed up too. Got a nice crack here. The fan connector has been totally torn out. So the fan just comes off and is bent. <laughs> That's fine, I got fans I can put in. You can see the motherboard a little bit down here and from here it actually looks pretty good. So I do have hope. So this is interesting and it's good news for us. It hasn't even been opened before. The interesting thing about this PS5 is it was actually sold on eBay to someone else. I bid on it, but I lost the bid. And when I lost the bid, I noticed that the person that bid against me and won the bid was someone with, I think very little or maybe even no feedback. And since I know eBay, I kind of assumed that they wouldn't even pay. So I sent the seller a message and told them if they didn't pay, then I would like to buy this PS5. The seller said that they did actually pay for it, which I was disappointed by, but they asked a bunch of questions and he thought they'd probably return it and I agreed. And then about two weeks later, I got an email from the seller telling me that they did indeed send the PS5 back to him and he'd sell it to me. So that's why I have it today. And the first buyer that bought it didn't even open it. So they were just obviously disappointed in the condition of it, even though the seller sold it like he should as parts of repair. That's one of the things I really dislike about eBay. But in this case, it was pretty good for me. There's a rock stuck in this. Let's try and crushed rock. Let's try and get that out of there so we can get this screw out. There we go. And here is kind of our first look at the motherboard. We got a little bit of bending going on here. This is totally destroyed, but that's fine. That's just part of the heat sink system. We'll take a look at the optical disk drive in a little bit. It looks like we got some bending going on here. Oh yeah, it's very bent down here. Okay, top plate comes off and this is definitely worrisome down here. This ribbon cable is just totally pulled out. <laughs> that piece just falls right out. That's fine, we can put another one of those in there and that's not a problem. So this is definitely the part I'm most worried about. Luckily, it's just a power supply connector over here. So we'll know for sure once we get this board flipped over, but I'm kind of thinking we might be able to get away with that and just straighten that out. Wow, this part is not good news. That's liquid metal right there. This means that it probably took a direct hit on the APU and it just squished all the way out here. That's going to be real interesting to see what happened there. These heat sinks here aren't too bad except for this area right here. That's pretty bad there. But other than that, they're not too bad. It is bent right here as well and bent over here too. So there is a bit of a ripple here in this motherboard. So I don't know, I'm getting less and less hopeful, but I still do have hope. And let's have a look at the APU and the liquid metal. Oh yeah, we got a serious problem here. All of this liquid metal just squished right out. That could have actually happened in the drop if it fell. The initial impact could have caused it to spill right out through here. And you can see similar right here on the heatsink. Honestly though, that actually is fairly impressive because I don't see a bunch of liquid metal all over the board. It really kind of stayed right where they wanted it to and you can see this sponge material here really soaked up a lot of it, which I think is the purpose of it. So I'm fairly impressed that this liquid metal system seemed to keep the liquid metal 
right where it should have been for the most part. And now it's time for a coffee break because Trade Coffee is sponsoring this video. Trade makes it easy to find new coffees you'll love without having to be a coffee expert. With Trade, you can find new coffees from the nation's best local roasters, like this coffee called Bark at the Moon by Drink Coffee Do Stuff. Trade matches you to your own personal selection of coffee and ships straight from the roaster at the peak of freshness. Here's how it works. First, you need to take the quiz on Trade's website. You just need to answer the questions about how you like your coffee, and Trade will curate matches just for you. Then you choose your delivery frequency, and it'll appear at your doorstep, delivered at the peak of freshness so you never run out again. After that, you just rate your matches so Trade can keep getting you the coffees you love the most. Another great thing about Trade is they use compostable packaging to ship all of their coffee in. Like I said, this was my first bag of coffee that Trade sent, and I absolutely love it. It's a dark roast that tastes like dark chocolate with caramel drizzle. And I love the fact that Trade sends coffee from roasters all over the United States. This specific bag of coffee was roasted in Lake Tahoe. Trade guarantees that you're gonna love your first bag of coffee, and if you don't, they'll ship you out a new bag for free. And even better, my viewers will get their first bag for free when you sign up. Just take the quiz by clicking on my link in the description box, and free shipping is also included. Mm. Oh yeah, let's get back to the video. So the motherboard definitely isn't in great shape. We've got a major bend right here. Even some of the layers are separating. And then you can see there's even a bend right here, which is not a good place for it since the APU is right down here. And then it kind of bends back over here. But that all being said, let's put this back together enough so we can test it and see if it powers on at all. And here we go with the new liquid metal. These PS5s, they do take a lot of liquid metal, so I'm gonna put a lot on there. Okay, that looks pretty good. So this is another PS5 board and heatsink. That came out of one of the PS5s I tried to fix in an earlier video. This PS5 is not fixable, so I'm gonna be using the heatsink and whatever other parts I need to try and fix today's PS5. This PS5 looks to be one of the original revisions that had this gray thermal pad right here. I'm actually gonna keep this on here because I think this motherboard that I'm putting in here can use all the support we can give it. I'm gonna use a very scientific method to bend this back called the needle nose plier method. Okay, and that's enough that it shouldn't cause any problems, especially when we put all the screws in. I am gonna use the power supply from the original busted up PS5 just to see if it will work or not. And now we can install this motherboard into this frame. Now let's see if this cable will plug in. And it does, that's good news. Just to be clear, I am losing quite a bit of confidence here with how bent this motherboard is, but we can't come as far as we have and just not try and fix it. We got it together enough to test. Let's plug it in and see if we get any power at all. I can't plug the HDMI cable in because the HDMI port is messed up on this motherboard, of course, but I am gonna plug the power in. Okay, I actually heard some noise from the disk drive. Press the eject button. Oh, nothing. Let's try the power. Nothing at all. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put in a known good power supply because the power supply that's in it obviously could be bad since it was ran over and all. So I'm gonna try that first and see if that'll give us power. Now with a known good power supply in, let's see if we get an eject beep. Ooh, no, and no power. Let's see if we have power on these two pins. That's the power coming in, and yes we do, 12.08 volts. So we have power coming into the motherboard, but turning on either of these buttons does nothing. I think given the fact that the liquid metal was spilled all over, it'd be a good idea for us to take a look and see if it was spilled onto the APU chip itself, because if it was, that can cause this exact problem we're having. So let's do that next, and then along the way we'll check out the motherboard more and see if there's any other obvious problems. So using a thermal imaging camera, Really the only thing that shows on this board is this little hot spot right here. I think it's more of just a warm spot. It's 80, 90, eh, 91, and the surrounding board is 81. So about a 10 degrees difference on this little area right here. I don't see anything obvious here. I will check once we flip the board over, but that's the only hot spot at all. And even that isn't exactly hot, it's just warmer than the surrounding areas. So that spot that was kind of warm would be right about here. So I'm gonna check these fuses over here and then check around some of these components and see if we have any obvious problems. Then I'll also take this cover off so we can inspect the APU and make sure that there's no liquid metal on any of the little chips on top of the APU. Oh, we might have a bad fuse there. 
that fuse is good. Okay, so we do have a bad fuse, it looks like. So that's definitely a problem, but I wanna make sure we check out this APU and make sure that there's no bridge joints or anything from liquid metal before we go through and fix this fuse because something caused that fuse to blow. There's not really any way for me to know what it is, but I do wanna make sure that it's not from the APU. So now this is, on the other side of the board, this is where it was a little bit warmer than the rest of the board. And as you can see, there's a lot of shorted components right in this area. So this chip could be faulty. There could be some other problem. I'll look into it a little bit more. But let's take a look at that APU and just make sure that that's nice and clean underneath that shield. Oh, this isn't good. This looks like some of the APU itself that has been kind of crunched away. I'm cleaning this groove out because there's a seal right under here and I wanna make sure that area is totally clean. I'm hoping that I'll be able to reuse this piece right here, but if I break that seal and the sealing adhesive just comes out and gets all dirty, then I just won't be able to reuse that seal. So right here is that seal. We actually got that up pretty good, so I think we're good there. Okay, and there we go. So I don't see any issues at all with these little chips on the APU itself. There is absolutely no leakage of the liquid metal. So this barrier system they're using is apparently pretty effective. This though does worry me quite a bit. The actual APU chip itself has been broken on this top part here. So that is definitely not great news. With this much damage just on this part, I can't imagine that the rest of the APU is in good enough condition to work. And I'm guessing that's probably why we have the shorts on the board that we have. Now, the last thing that I wanna take a look at is this optical disc drive. This thing has just been totally destroyed. So let's get it apart and have a look on the inside and see if it's anything that's fixable or that might be ever usable again. Okay, we have all the screws out. I'm not sure we'll be able to get it apart yet though. Okay. Now when you don't hook the cables. There's all sorts of parts rattling around in here while I'm doing this. Okay, let's check out the inside of this disk drive. So even though this case is really smashed up, I think there actually are quite a few good usable parts in here, including these switches on the outside, this lens and carrier, this whole interior part I think is probably okay. So at least we have one bit of good news. So unfortunately this PS5 is just too destroyed to fix, which is kind of what I thought when I bought it, but I thought I should at least give it a chance and see if we can save another game console. If you wanna see me try and fix 13 more PS5s, I'll put a link for that video up on your screen so you can come hang out with me and see how many out of the 13 that I fixed. Don't forget to use my exclusive link below for your first bag of trade coffee for free. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.